Next, we've got the Seattle Seahawks. Good gracious, Pete Carroll. Nine and a half is the win total. To go over is minus 140. To go under is plus 110, which, by the way, uh, with Russell Wilson at quarterback, they have won 10 games in eight of the nine seasons with him as the quarterback. They've had three straight win total overs, 12 wins last season, 11 wins the year before that, 10 wins the season before that. To win the division, they're number three at plus 250. So none of these are outlandish picks. Obviously, Arizona, the, the lowest at plus 500. To win the NFC, they are plus 1,200. The playoffs, to make the playoffs, exact same odds as the over-under here. Minus 140 to make the playoffs, plus 110 to not make the playoffs. They're projected favorites in nine games, and their projected strength of schedule, they've got the eighth easiest schedule uh, in the NFL this year. The defense started poorly last year. They were the ninth best pass defense after week nine last year. Now, you go look at the schedule. It's not exactly a murderer's row, but they were playing better, so that's definitely good. They hired Shane Waldron to replace Brian Schottenheimer as OC, even after their scheme shift last year. They Their scheme shift last year, they threw the football 60% of the time last year. Two seasons before that, they had run the football 60% of the time. They were doing last year what I had been screaming for them to do forever, and yet they still... Still were throwing it, still the most sacks in the league, still da 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 which turned into a whole off-season debacle, right? Just a mess. The second most difficult schedule in opposing defenses, even though they've got the eighth easiest schedule. So it's not going to be as easy for, you know, Mr. Unlimited to be throwing the ball all over the yard. The offensive line still got questions. You know, they, they brought in... Uh, basically a nobody is their only free agent signing on the offensive line. Stone Forsyth is the rookie offensive lineman that they brought in in, the, what, the sixth round or something like that. Went eight and three in one-score games last year. Two straight years, they have won 62% or more of their one-score uh, one games, which is unbelievable. Like, this is... Russell Wilson does Tom Brady-type stuff, and I don't know how he does it. Now, obviously, they got a good receiving core right now. But, I, but Chris, I want to take the under on this so bad. Like, I, I've, I've got them sitting at 9-7, and seven, but I know that we're, with Russell Wilson at the quarterback position, they're going to win 10 games. So I think the smart play is, is to go over, but after all the mess that we saw in the offseason, I, I want to take the under so bad and take that plus 110. Which, which way are you leaning here? I've, I've got this team... Got this team at 10 and 7 exactly. The <laughs> nine and a half scares me. I, so my play would be over in this situation. So far, we've picked three divisions. We've picked 12 teams now. And of those 12 teams, I'm going to have a ticket or already have a ticket on all but four. Four are complete stayaways. And that's because my number that I have them for and the number is almost identical. And that scares me. So I want to give myself a little bit of play. Seahawks are the only one in this conference that that I'm I'm that close on. I it, it, it's the NFC West gets to play the AFC South this year, and so yeah. obviously you've got two almost guaranteed wins with the Jags and yeah, you the might Texans. have three. Yeah, yeah, it's possible. I think the Colts are going to. I mean, let's uh, Gary. Let's they play the Colts honest. Week One. Yeah. What are the Colts really going to be like? Even even with a completely healthy Carson Wentz, is anybody really afraid of them? Only morons who still believe in Carson Wentz are afraid of them, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think so. I, you know, you're right. I, I'm going to take the over here at minus 140. I want that that plus 110 looks so juicy. Like, I, I could see them going 9 and 8, but I, I can't do it. I mean, they I, got, mean, I can see it too, which is why it's a... For yeah. an actual play, for an actual bet, it's a stay away from me. I can't, I can't put good money on this. Pete Carroll went from being seen as unanimously one of the, like a top five coaches in the NFL to I heard maybe twenty different people who cover the NFL give like their top ten coaches list, and he wasn't on over half of them. Like didn't really? make a top ten list. Yes, and That's I a- think it's because they see he's supposed to be the defensive genius in his defense has systematically just fallen apart on his watch. And then also they see how badly he handcuffs the offense. Every time the offense starts looking great, 
he messes with it, and he's very open about, I want to run the football. I want to play this style of football. And, and, and it doesn't matter what wins. It doesn't matter. It's the first time. Take the picture of Pete Carroll down that still looks like a, you know, a, a, a mid-50-year-old man. That's a 70-year-old man that won't change his ways. Yeah. Do you think that the off-season stuff with Russ wanting out of there, do you think that that does anything to the team like during the season? No, no, I don't. I think these guys are professionals. I think they figure the shit out. Like, I know. I'm, I'm not worried about that. Yeah, that was kind of my thought process. They all want to win. They all have, The beauty is they all have the same objective, winning football games. Okay? And they know that they have to do that together. All right? So, so when people kind of talk about that's going to tear the locker room up, like everybody's using, like, the vaccine now. Like, you know, this guy's won't get it. Will that, like, destroy the locker room? No. No, I think these locker rooms are pretty damn thick. Over years, we've seen guys come through with drug problems, with gambling problems, men sleeping with other girls and stuff, people on the teammates and stuff, and fights happen. All kinds of ugliness has happened over the, the century of playing football. And guess what? When they go out on the field on Sunday, they go to work. Yeah. It's what they do for their job. They take it seriously, and they really do their best. So I don't think little piddly shit matters. I really don't. You might be right about this. What I do worry about is Pete, though. Like, like hire, hire some guys to run this thing and let them run it. Stop being so hands-on. Stop being so so demanding of your way of doing things. Your way of doing things is going by the dodo. Uh, like, you can run the football. That's fine. You can't run it the way you run it. Go see how Belichick runs it. Go see how Shanahan runs it. Those two guys run it successfully all day long. But they don't run it like you. You remember how well Russell Wilson was playing at the beginning of last season? Yes. And, and then Pete said, we got to stop this shit. Yeah. We're scoring yeah. too many points. Yeah, and then dropped it back in and lost to the Giants towards the end of the season. I mean, they still won like yes. six of their last seven regular season games last year. I mean, they, they won 12 games last year. 12 games, and and I'm sitting here going, yeah, this team wasn't that good, you know? But, but at the end of the season, they weren't that good. And that's you the thing. about but, the beginning of the season, they were they were pretty awesome. Oh, the beginning of the season, they were they were tearing everybody apart. I mean, they were scoring a ton of points. but And so they hit that lull where they lost three out of four in the middle of the year, and at the end of the season, they win six out of seven. Like, I, I just... Of course, they didn't exactly beat a murderer's row at the end of the season. They they beat Arizona at Philly, uh, at the Jets. Let's see against the uh, football team, the Rams, and then the Forty ers who had nothing left at that point. So, uh, I don't know. I want to, you know, I'm going to take the over because I I just think that Russell Wilson is going to do that. Would it shock me if they find a way to lose eight games? No. Because they, they keep tinkering with stuff. They keep messing with stuff. like Just like you were talking about with Pete Carroll. I think that's it. And so... I mean, the offensive coordinator that they brought in is the Rams' old offensive coordinator. You know, another yeah, guy that's but, worked under McVay got a job. Yeah, but this is... It, like, it's not like he called plays, right? So... Yeah. It, I don't know. Like, Schottenheimer he took did... took orders, which is what Pete wants. Somebody who takes orders. Yeah. But now he's got to call plays and take orders. Yeah, call if, if they threw the ball 60% of the time last year... And they swapped out offensive coordinators. What do you think the split is this year? You think it's 60 40 running to, to passing? I don't know. I really don't. I, at some point in time, is somebody going to get in the head of Pete? It, it, is this where the GM and the owner say, listen, Russell's got to, you know, we got to let Russ cook? Here. Yeah. Got to, like, when, when we let him open, we, we look really good. You have to move out of the way. You have to change your mind on this. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't, I don't run. know who's going to do that. I don't know if anybody's going to do that. You uh, you expect them to make the playoffs this year? Yes, but that's because I don't think any other team in the NFC that's not a potential division winner is going to be good at all. I could see that. I could see that. Yeah, yeah, you're probably right. Like, I, I think, you know, Somebody between the Bears and the Packers are probably going to win that division, and the other team, you know. Won't they, be very they good. Might, they might be in the running for the wild card. They might not. 
I, I don't see anybody in the NFC South competing with, with Tampa Bay. I might be wrong on that, but I think the Saints are going way, way backwards, like on the roller skates, on a hill, sliding backwards. And I just don't think the other two teams are ready yet. I just don't. Yeah, I I tend to agree. I tend to agree. Thing, and the same thing with the with the East. Like we're gonna have three wild card teams this year, man. <laughs> I don't know if I could find seven playoff teams. So all right. All right. Let's see. I think that's gonna wrap up the NFC West. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com. And if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter at Gary WCE, at Chris B. Giannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.